Everybody, we've got an incredible guest who's dedicated his life to helping veterans with emotional and mental issues and PTSD. His name is Jay, and Jay is with a, pro a program called Harmonetics Project. Jay, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us on the Veterans Wealth Network. Well, thanks for having me, Barry. It's really great to be here. Thank you. Well, um, Jay, I think probably where we should start is, you know, let's just... Give us an idea of, you know, when you joined the military, was this something you always wanted to do? We know that, uh, you know, you were in the, in the Navy and, um, and you were in the reserves. Why don't you, instead of me telling your story, why don't you tell it a little bit? And if there was any, you know, at that time when you were in the Navy, if you had any inkling what you eventually would be doing. Well, when I, when I, my, you know, my father was a merchant mariner back in the day. My uncles were all in the service. I had a full bird colonel in the Air Force who worked in the Pentagon, and my other uncles were in World War II, uh, both in the Army and the Navy. And so I followed in my father's footsteps, although he was an engineer and I took the deck route, so I learned how to you know, navigate the boats. I didn't like the engine room. It was too hot for me. And there's many stories about that experience that I could regale you with. Uh, but when I graduated after four years, um, I had an ensign's commission in the Navy, in the reserves. So most everybody who graduated had that, you know, passed that Coast Guard exam and got inducted into the into the Navy. After about a year and one one little tour of two months, I said, you know, I should really go active duty. And so I applied and I said to myself, well, you know, if you're going to go active duty, why not go all the way and apply for the Navy SEALs? So I applied. They lost my paperwork. I sent to the, you know, I went to the, the local uh, sign up group for the Navy. I said, I want to go active duty. They sent in the paperwork and they lost it. Seems like a, a thing that happens in the military. So I did it again. They sent it in again. They lost it. I then did it again, sent it to my uncle who worked at the Pentagon at the time. And he walked it down to the Navy office and said, this is my nephew. Give him an answer. About three weeks later, I got a nice letter from the secretary of the Navy saying, thank you for applying for full, full duty, but we have fulfilled our, our, uh, our quota of officers for the year which made me feel like I was unwanted. But I was also going through a real challenging time in my life where I was trying to find my spiritual home, you know, and I was called to a quiet life of, mon of, of the monastic life. So I went to, and, and being a guy who always does the most dramatic, I went to a Cistercian monastery where they only talk like one hour a week and and I joined them and I lived with them for eight months. And at the eight, end of eight months, the novice master came back to me and said, Jay, we, we really like you. you. You know, we've lived with you for eight months, but we feel you're a bit gregarious and should find another way to serve God. In other words, you're loud, you're obnoxious. This ain't for you. And luckily, one of the older monks pulled me aside and said, you know, dude, you think we're the heroes in here, but really we're not. We can't live in the outside world and find God. We have to come in here to keep connected. Otherwise, we lose him. You're going to be fine. Go serve God out in the world. I didn't really believe him, but now I'm out of the Navy. What do I do? You know, there was at the time, it was 1982, 83. There weren't a lot of shipping jobs available. So I went to work. I got a, you know, the first job I had, the guy said, oh, you've transported Marines? My degree was in Marine transportation. I was like, no. <laughs> but I worked a whole bunch of jobs for many, many years and recently retired. And that's when I found my old friend who had helped me with a challenge, an Oriental medical doctor. And he had a program. Now, from there, my life took many journeys. I, I, my, le my most beneficial was 15 years running martial arts schools. Until I got hurt, I got hit in the head, paralyzed from the neck down for a few minutes, and that really ruined my career. But it set me on the path of trying to figure out how to heal myself, and that took me into mind-body healing. And I did that for uh, six or seven years. I ran a mind-body institute, was trained, 
fully integrated thing with acupuncture, massage, yoga, Tai Chi. And I, I was trained in life skill training, which is a way to change your brain, really understand your nervous system, that type of thing. And that went on really well until I got cancer and my whole life went off. I was like the guy where the car goes off the cliff, goes down the cliff, the bird lands on it. You fall some more, you land on the front, the car lands on the roof and explodes and you crawl out and you're on fire. That was me in nine, when I was 45. Wow. And I wound up working as an artist for a while doing glass. And then I got a job for a, a, a large corporation as a customer service and operations manager, which, you know, all of my history came into bear with that being trained as an officer and all that kind of stuff. You know, I was like, Hey, I can use this finally. And, and, and then I did that for 15 years and at 65, I retired or 60, 63, I retired from my corporate job. And I was going to be, go back to being an artist making glass, painting, doing bones eyes. And that was in January of last year. And in February, I re-met one of the practitioners who was on my cancer challenge team and also worked with me in the Mind Body Institute. His name was Jeffrey Zimmerman. He's an oriental medical doctor and, and board certified acupuncturist. He's also a, a phenomenal um, musician. He was under the London Academy or the London Philharmonic Orchestra, played bass on one for lay Miz for years as he was getting his acupuncture treatment. So, or his acupuncture license. And he had a program that I learned 25 years ago. It's called Harmonetics. And when I met him in February of last year, I said, Hey, Jeff, we haven't seen each other for 25 years. What do you do? And he says, Harmonetics. I said, Still? He said, Yeah. I said, well, tell me what's going on. He said, well, last month I was in New York City. One of my clients is, the, is the, a guy named Christian Benitez. And Chris is, was an, uh, the crew chief for the Clinton White House for the helicopter, right? The, the Air Force One. It suffers tremendously from PTSD and a bunch of other issues. And, and he was working with Jeffrey and he got such benefit that he said, you need to come into the city and train people in the city. And so he set up a meeting with the director of the, the VA there in, in New York, and they had a meeting and the doctor there said, oh yeah, Jeffrey, it sounds like your program's really good. However, there's 210,000 people here that need your services and you see them one at a time. It's not going to, you can't scale fast enough. Jeffrey didn't take it as a a mistake or a no, he took it as an opportunity. I got to find somebody who can help me build a program. Now I, in, in the stint of being from here to here, I did 15 years running martial arts schools. I ran, I, let, I, let, me, I, let me interrupt you for a second because sure. I want to point out, I happen to know this, that I think you're being a little modest. You, 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 you didn't have just like a couple of martial arts schools. Yeah, you no. had, a lot of mar martial yeah, arts schools, I right? I, I, I had 10, I, I, I owned eight and managed 10. I had a okay, partner sorry. who was, we were very successful, you know, and, and during that time I learned a lot about teaching. I, my, it was, it, I first opened the school in 1989. The school had had 50 students in it for 10 years. They had signed up 50 students a year, each of those years. Something didn't match to me. So my, my brain said, what if I kept 80% of the students that I signed up and I signed up two a week, that would be twice as many signups. And if I kept 80%, I'd have 80 students. And I just used that simple formula. And within three years, I had 200 and I needed to move to school within three years, I had 300. And then I topped out at about 370 in that one school. Well, and out of that school, we produced eight or 10 really good instructors who then went out and opened other schools and we built a little business. But, you know, at, at a certain point, well, my brain was not focused on making money. It was on helping people. And there was a bit of a discord with my partner who was my martial art teacher at the time. 
I, I talked to some other friends and one other friend of mine who ran a mind body Institute. He was a ninth degree black belt. He ran a mind body Institute down in Jupiter medical center in Jupiter, Florida. And I said, that's interesting. I'm in pain. Maybe I should learn that. And I spent the next four years training with him to open up the mind body Institute in Avon. And that ran for five years until my life went off that cliff. And, and I just, at the end of it, I was so tired that I didn't have enough energy to give anybody else. And I just stopped. I stopped teaching. I stopped doing everything and just went to work. It was just easier. And when I came back to, to, to today, in this past year, what's come back up is all that teaching that I did is now applicable. My wife actually said to me, wouldn't it be interesting, Jay, that everything you've done in your life was just to be here? And my answer was, yeah, <laughs> that's right. So right now, if we fast forward to today, uh, we, we were incorporated in July of last year. Jeffrey incorporated the 501c3, the Harmonetics Project. He, he had hired a friend of mine who came to me a little while later and said, Jay, you know this better than I. Will you help me? I got back involved helping building the program. And my wife actually took Jeffrey's treatment. And in a month, a woman who had been in like serious pain for a decade was a new woman. Wow. Her pain was less. Her mind was open. She had had, you know, in that challenge, she had morphine prescribed. She had opiates prescribed. She fought her way off of both of those. Then she, they legalized marijuana, so she started smoking a lot of weed for the pain. But that left her kind of dull and not quite herself. The four weeks of, uh, and this is what really got my attention. First week she went, she had two or three days without pain and it came back. And I asked her, did you do that thing that Jeffrey taught you, that harmonetics thing? No, Jay. Oh, I'm a husband. What can I say? Nothing. <laughs> right? So then we go back for another treatment. She gets four or five days off. Wow, that's good. Comes back. Did you do it? No. Same thing the third week. The fourth week, she had gone almost six days. And when I, we had to go back for another treatment. And when I woke her up that morning, she wasn't feeling good. And I had a doctor's appointment because I have a, you know, went to the doctor, came home, came back. We needed to leave right then to get there in time. And I wasn't, I was not happy. I, I didn't think she was going to be ready. And when I got to the house and opened the door, she opened the door and there she was fully dressed, ready to go. Big smile, coffee in hand. Let's go. We got in the car and I'm back in the car out. And I looked at her and I said, I have one question. What happened between the time I left and the time I got home? And she said, oh, I did Jeff's harmonetics practice. And she's been doing it ever since. And she is a different person. And, and when I started the year last year, I was 275 pounds. I currently weigh 210. And that's because the injury that I had when I got it, I was 180 pounds. I fought to try to stay in the martial arts for four years and ballooned up to two, two, 300 pounds. I couldn't do anything. I was injured. I had to stop. And it took me until, and I'm going to say this year, to resolve that injury I got back in 19, or two, what was it, 1995. So almost 30 years, almost 40 years with an injury. And I, I learned to live in pain, five, six level pain all the time. And I don't live in that pain anymore. You know, and, and, and one of the benefits of, of what we do is you, you work on your breath, you work on your alignment, which liberates the energy from the Chinese perspective. You then learn to smooth out your whole body through movement. And that's, that changes what's going on inside. 
And we could talk a lot about how the joints work and, and the muscles being tense applies pressure to the joint, which now if you have any kind of inflammation in the joint, that creates more pressure. And that's the arthritis problem. And when you relax everything, the joint opens and then the pain just goes away. And if you, there's a certain thing that I learned myself because I was living in level 10 pain all the time. It was dramatic. It was not good. But I learned how to use my mind to change the, my relationship to pain, right? It's like you're trying to hold on to a pencil and, and, or, or anything, you know, you're trying to hold on to it. And somebody says, I want you to completely relax your hand, but don't drop it. So I, the answer is this, <laughs> I change my relationship to it and I can completely relax and not right. drop it. Right. So I changed, I learned to, you know, my brain works kind of weirdly, but I come up with these metaphors that work for me and it was all, and I, and I look for what works for other people. But mine is that your pain has three aspects, the pain nerve response, the memory of pain. I, oh, I've got a pain. What am I going to do to get rid of the pain? Oh, was it like this pain or that pain? So you remember every pain you ever had. And then there's the anticipation of pain. How bad can it get? Right. And I created what I call a, just a mindful pain management process where I take a person through the breathing, which is harmonetics, the alignment, which is harmonetics. And then we take their awareness and we just ask them to ask themselves five questions. What color is the pain? What shape is the pain? How is it sharp or dull? Is it, is it, uh, hot or cold? Does it change or stay the same? And what that does is eliminates what it's not leaving you just with the pain. So if, if, if the anticipation and memory are of pain are part of your experience, that's your suffering. When you eliminate these two, you just reduce your suffering by 25% or 30, down to 33%. Now take that feeling and put it alongside what you're hearing right now, what you're seeing right now, what you're tasting right now, what the other parts of your body feel like. And now that pain becomes a note in the orchestra of the experience. And Almost to the client that I've worked with, they report a reduction in pain. Some, I've had many who go, wow, I'm not in pain anymore. Because a lot of the pain, when you have chronic pain, and this is a big problem for veterans, when you have chronic pain, you think everybody else doesn't have any pain. So any pain triggers that whole thing. And as you learn that you can do this technique, you have, you have a skill to step out of it. So this is the same as harmonetics, doing the breathing. It's all part of what I call a combination lock approach to, to your nervous system and, and hacking your brain, right? We all remember in high school or grammar school or wherever you got your first locker and they gave you a number and said, don't forget it. And then, you know, that first week, you're always forgetting that you wrote it on your hand, you wrote it on your book, you, you know. But by the end of the year, you could be, and if, if you got, and in, in, in the beginning of the year, if you got flustered, forget it, you're not getting into that locker. But by the end of the year, you could be furious and still get into that locker. Why? Because your brain had created a neurological pathway of 12 to the left, 13 to the right, 24 to the left, and I'm in there, right? Brain plasticity is the, the engine of everything I've done since 1989 when I was trained in that. And, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's an amazing thing when you understand that and, and you realize that you can have the power to affect your own living space, this flesh thing that you'll, you reside in, right? So when I met Jeffrey again, he had refined it even, even more. And I had been using what I call harmonetics 0.50 now, 
it wasn't even called harmonetics back in the day when he first taught it to me when I had a cancer challenge. When I, when I started to pay attention again here, he had refined it even more. So what I saw was the ability to, to create a simple program that anybody can do and anybody can learn to teach if they have the right mindset. Now, the people who are being taught now, and we have five gentlemen right now going through our initial guide training. It's a 30 hour training every day for six weeks. And they spend an hour a day with Jeffrey and I, and, and, and each, each 10 hours has a focus piece on learning material and four hours on how to teach it. And then the second group is how to go deeper with that. And the third grouping is, is how to teach it. So over the course of a, a nine or 30 hours, they get a really big and strong introduction to the program. And then they, that's the first level of the program, the guide level. And there's two levels of that. And then we have a pathfinder uh, level, which is somebody who can create new guides. And because, and, and we got the term pathfinder from one of our, one of the veterans who's being trained now, his name is Mike. And he's a, a ex-combat uh, special operations vet uh, who, who was a medic as well. And, and he, he started to learn it and went, oh, I want to be able to do what you do, Jeff. So we had to actually create a fourth level, the mentor. So, so we have four levels of training that we can put veterans through. The, the not-for-profit part of it is really to train veterans and not have them have to pay money. As a matter of fact, we want to, we want to give them the training and give them a stipend for being trained. That's what we're out looking for funding for is to be able to train veterans so that they can then give them a little stipend to go do their first couple of classes for veterans for free. Right. And then they can teach it to the public. They can teach it to whoever they would like. They can also focus only on veterans solely. But the idea is our not for profit was designed. Jeffrey gave me three, three challenges. One, Make a program that will do what I do, Jay. Two, make it so that I can train veterans to train veterans. Three, make it so they can make a few bucks while they do that. So they, it, if they're a challenged veteran and they need a, uh, you know, an extra source of income, they can use this as an extra so source of income. And over the years, we, we, we worked. We, did te we started testing uh, classes in March of last year. And we did four iterations of the class. Um, some zoom, some live, some hybrids. Boys. And I think we've boiled it down to a very good six hour class. That's done over a six week pro process. It takes somebody through, uh, the nourishing of the body energy, uh, and, improving the elimination of the body energy, the kinetic chain, which is how the body works as a unit. And then we, we discuss the, the, so there's energy that goes up and energy that goes down. And that happens at the same time, all the time, right? Like rain, right? Water vapor goes up and then it rains down and then it goes up and it rains down. That's the hydrologic cycle. It's that cycle of life that we have that the Chinese medicine says is true. And Dr. Zimmerman says he's a, uh, you know, like an oriental medical doctor, right? So he says that mod ancient medicine and modern science agree on one thing. The body's designed to harmonize. And mm -hmm. that harmony is what we, what we bring to people. Jay, I, my, if I could just uh, uh, interject uh, real quick. They, it's, it's really incredible to hear about the program and see the, the amount of energy, effort, and, and just pure work that you guys have put into to crafting this to help others. Um, one of the things that it's not lost on me because I, I was that guy, right? Like uh, 
when I was transitioning out of the Marine Corps, I, I ended up uh, attending Norwich University, uh, oldest private military school in the, uh, the country. The there was this this guy beef up and around campus, and uh, the happiest guy you'd ever meet. And I, I uh, call him my guru now, right? But he he started teaching uh, transcendental meditation. He talked about his journey, and he was. He similarly found himself in that path along the, the way. Um, I feel like, it, at least for myself, it, it took me a bit to warm up to it, right? Yeah. Because it was this idea that it's this thing that was like hippy dippy or whatever you want to call it, right? Like, I don't need help, right? Like, there's was an ego that, that was tied to it. And so, as you, as you think about the population that could be impacted the most by this, you think about the mindset that they have, what is your message to them? Uh, as it relates to uh, reaching out and, and, and taking ownership of, of again, like improving their, their overall health? Well, the, the, the truth is that we have all, we can, we can go out, like I've been working complementary care since 1989. That's when I opened my first Mind Body Institute. Now we're, we're 40 years out from there. And the science is just, I mean, I stopped looking at it 20 years ago, took a 20 year hi hiatus and then started to get back into it. And I had, I, I was like, well, I got to go look back, you know, back when I was first studying, it was Candace Pert and the molecules of emotion and Dr. Benson with the, uh, the mindfulness and, you know, uh, full catastrophe living. These were the books that were going right now. We, we fast forward now and you've got Basil van de Court with The Body Keeps the Score and uh, Paul Levine with all of his somatic healing. And then you've got the, there's another book with, uh, you know, um, uh, No Self, No Problem. And I unfortunately can't remember the gentleman who did it, but they did a bunch of research on, on people who had seizures and they split the brain so that they could stop the seizures. And then that, that allowed them to look at both sides of the brain independently. And, and that, all of that wasn't in my toolbox back here. Right. So when you take what, what is the current state of America, all of those that have gone through since nine, since nine 11, our military has been at war really, you know, I mean, whether we want to call it a, a, a war or we call it a police thing, whatever, but they've been in, in combat. And, and one of my guys, Dave, who's a 25-year Army veteran, when somebody was interviewing him for us, they asked him the question. It's on my website. They asked him the question, you know, Dave, what do you, and I don't remember offhand the question, but he had, he literally had to stop and compose himself. He was, he was saying, you know, veterans go away. And then he had to stop and compose himself. And he said, and they need to find a way to, to get back home. And he said, this does that. This does, did it for me, does it? And he's, he's literally almost crying, you know? And, and it was just like every veteran that I've met, my way of introducing to this, to them, to this is an experience of how they can really quickly influence their nervous system in a new way they didn't expect. And it's, we call it the easy breath, yep. right? And that, I think that turns people into a new person a bit <laughs> because you have I, to capture well, their attention. You, your, your experience was that's, that's different and I don't understand it, but I'm going to yeah. give it a try. And for a while you were like, ah, what is this doing? I don't know. Ah. We use what, what I call a technique called the trellis of awareness, where we, it's a technique, right? I give you something to pay attention to. I add another thing, another thing, another thing. And what happens is as I add different parts of, of, for you to keep track of your left brain, which is the part that does all the judgmental stuff, gets to about three and gives up. And allows the, the other brain, other part of the brain, the more spatial part of the brain to take over. And as you do that, you're relaxed, you're dropping into the parasympathetic nervous system a bit. Oh. And when you add in the breathing, 
So you have intention. The intention is I'm going to do something. I put my attention in a certain way and take an action. And that leads to a sense of discovery, right? And when you, and I could, I probably say that when you first went, oh, wow, this guy could be my guru. You had discovered something yourself, right? Because my old, my old um, mentor used to say, Hey, Jay, if I say it, it's false. If you say it, it's true. Right? So You, you know what I find to be um, uh, odd about this, or not odd, but um, what I've found in my life, I've had a ton of therapy. Um, in fact, I've probably spent more than half of my life trying to fix different issues i've talked about it on this channel before of some of my demons and the um i've been sober you know 22 years now but i've been trying to stay sober them pretty much my entire life and um people find it hard to hear what you're saying um jay because they you know to them it sounds very esoteric and kind of hippie-ish you know like you know they're going to you know, enter into this, you know, almost like meditative type of state that's combined with lots of different techniques, you know, that, um, that is really not tangible. They have to, they have to go through this process to get to the end. And most people don't want to do that. They just want a pill or they want you to like turn off a switch right and make out. themselves. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, um, what we found though, is that, um, when I was growing up, I heard all about, you know, Chinese medicine and, and it was taken with a grain of salt. In fact, most people thought it was a bunch of BS, but now we're finding out that there's actually a lot of, uh, of truth to it. I mean, I drink, um, ceremonial, uh, matcha green tea because of the antioxidants that it has. And, the my doctor actually told me to take it and he's not an, uh, a, a me he's not an herbalist he's a traditional doctor you know we know that there's lots of different things that we can take from these ancient cultures that um that you know they've been doing them for thousands of years and it actually works so you know i think that if anybody's listening to this right now and they're getting caught up in a lot of the different um nuances that you're adding in there you know of of how this works we don't want to scare anybody off. You know, I think it starts with just a basic understanding of what you're trying to do. You know, it's kind of like people don't want to know necessarily at the be beginning how the sausage is made. They just want to know the sausage is delicious, you know. So um, right what, can we, what, what can we do as a, um, as a community of veterans you know, to, uh, maybe, you know, reach out to you or to help you in some way, you know, we're, we're running at, uh, a little over the, the time that we normally take for this. So I'd really like to bring this back around and, and, you know, the, the Harmonetics project is a nonprofit. You're, you have, you're trying to, to become nationwide. So what can anybody that's watching this, that wants to get involved do? to support you and maybe find out more about this themselves. Well, our, our website, uh, Barry is, is got a ton of information in it. Um, we're, we're always looking for donations to help fund a, a veteran going through the program, both just the basic six week program and ultimately the training program themselves. Um, what we're doing right now is we're launching. So I have five people in training. They'll be done in three weeks. I'm flying out to California for a month. I will be, or two months, probably. I'll be in San Diego for, for um, end of February through April, launching the program there. We're launching here. And, and, and well, if, if, a, if, a, if a veteran is interested in understanding, they go to the website, they reach out to me or the team, if there's somebody local where they are, we can connect them with the local people that we have in, in New England, California, and Florida right now. 
Um, we also have people in North Carolina and Arizona right now as well, but they're not in the, they're not at the level where they're trained yet. They're just taking classes, but we do zoom classes. Um, every, every month we'll have a zoom class that starts and it goes six weeks. So if somebody's interested in that, we're, we're putting information on that. We're just getting ready to launch the, the, the teaching it around the country. Well, I'd um, like to say just real quick. Sorry, uh, go ahead. I was just going to ask uh, for others that are watching. Where are you guys located right now? Where Where are you primarily headquartered? Our headquarters is is in. We have two headquarters. We have one in Connecticut right now. Actually, we have three headquarters. We have one in Connecticut. It's in Westport, Connecticut, um, at uh, four twenty uh, East. I should know this. <laughs> But I, I'm a, I'm from Bristol, Connecticut. I live in Bristol. And Jeffrey's office is the Harmonetics uh, Healing Center in Westport. And then we have a place in California that has agreed to host us, and that's the InSpot. It's an acupuncture clinic that works with veterans and does, uh, you know, if the veteran gets a, a a script from their doctor for acupuncture, they go there, they give them the script, and they give them acupuncture for free, and the VA gives them pays them for that. And then we also have a, a, a gentleman in High Springs, Florida, who owns a big piece of property and is working on, on ways to host classes in that area. Um, so well, we, we're, I, we're, I know that we're running out of time, Jay, because I, I'm unfortunately, uh, my partner in crime, Nick, has got a place he's got to go. Sure. We're going to put all of your contact information um, on the screen, you know, as we're okay. talking and yeah. we'll also make sure, you know, to put a link to uh, the Harmonetics project website, is there, uh, you can give us, you know, either the email or the, uh, the contact method that you prefer. And we'll make sure when we edit this video that we put that on there. Um, but guys, I just want to wrap this up by saying, first of all, thank you, Jay, for doing this. No problem. Um, and I and thank you, Nick, for also jumping on here and supporting me <laughs> and Jay. Um, but I would say that, uh, you know, if you're in pain and you feel like nothing has worked, especially if you are, as Jay put it on, you know, you've got a medicine cabinet full of drugs and you realize that that's not the ultimate way to, to, to recovery. Um, it just starts with just the desire to, to want to get better, you know, yeah. finding out the minutia of, of, uh, you know, what it's going to take through Harmonetics project is the second part to the plan. The first part is that you just got to be willing to, uh, to find out more. So, um, I want to say thank you, Jay. Thank you, Nick. I know that, uh, we are on a tight timeline and I apologize, Jay. We probably, we had some technical issues at the beginning folks or it wouldn't have been cut off so easily but um you, yeah. anything you want to say nick and party again just uh jay I, I really appreciate the work that you're doing i appreciate you taking the time to share the message with us uh and again for those of you that are out there that to barry's point you, you've got something that's going on you're not really sure where to turn just understand that there are resources out there there are, are folks that are dedicated and, and want to help right so just as simple as raising your hand. There are there, and that's so true that you you need to advocate for yourself. You need to not take no for an answer, and don't think just because somebody said this is the only thing that works. And if you just look at PTSD, and they say, "Oh, this drug works forty percent of the time," close the door, we're done. But then there's a better way like EMDR, which is the thing that the, the results of that is 60%, but people don't, because you're just making your eyes move back and forth, they say, how can that be more effective than a drug? Right. Because in the eight, in the sixties and seventies and eighties, we thought that chemistry was going to save us. It doesn't. Yeah. We, we've well, lied to I, it. <laughs> your point also, I might, I mean, even acupuncture, people used to think that was a joke. And I know a lot yeah. of people that have got tremendous uh results from acupuncture absolutely but jay we'll have you on again you know um let us know how harmonetics project is doing and yeah. um you know if Wait. if guys will leave the contact information for jay 
You can, if you're watching this on, on Facebook or on YouTube, you can also leave a message on there. Somebody will probably get back to you. One of us will for yep. sure. And we're on, we're on, I'm on Facebook, Jay Van Schelks. You can also find me under Bapu Das, which is what my grandchildren call me. <laughs> and that's nice. a story. And then, and you can also find me on LinkedIn. Uh, there's my, my name, Jay Van Schelk, and then the Harmonetics Project. And I will be in San Diego for two months coming up in, uh, in the end of February and we're going to have classes. So if you're in the San Diego area, look up the in spot and say, Hey, when is harmonetics coming? They know we're coming. So if we haven't set anything up dates wise, but it'll be soon after the 23rd when I'm in town. So I look forward to seeing anybody that's in San Diego. Absolutely. Awesome. Guys, right. everybody, Thanks. uh, thank you so much, Jay. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. And, uh, Stay tuned for the next video. I hope that I, I hope you guys got something out of this. Thanks. Take Thanks, care. everybody. Take care. Thanks for having me, guys. Take yep. care.